I can record. We are now recording. Welcome to the Monday, June 10th Go IPFS team meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Molly. Okay, so um, we're going to do this the same uh, the same way we did this uh, last week. I apologize. I'm going to get a little bit of background noise um, as we are grinding coffee. Um, we have uh, no announcements unless anyone wants to announce anything right now. No blockers or needs that anyone knows about. Anyone wants to mention the last minute? No? Okay. Sorry, this is an extremely long coffee grind. Um, okay, there we go. So uh, let's get started with our current IPFS uh, uh, initiatives, uh, starting with data store. I'm not actually sure who is responsible for this at the moment. Can anyone in this call speak to that? Lucas, maybe? That's okay. We can uh, we can either update uh, update asynchronously, or uh, we can follow that up at the end. Um, I mean, I okay, we can. Oh, hear you yes, now. yes. Oh yeah, yeah. So you should ask me. Uh, there are no updates from my side. Are we blocked on anything on um, the Badger team? Don't think so. I need to check if they finally did the release. We are waiting on. Yeah, wait some time now. So. If they yeah. did, we can update Badger. And if we update Badger, then hopefully the final issues that we diagnosed as kind of being blocking for pointing to this more as like a, a default pathway for folks will be resolved, fingers crossed, or are there other known things standing in our way for that? Yeah, so they rolled back one fix, uh, I think, uh, because apparently there is some other way to make things work, but I think it's quite weird because it involves closing and opening Badger to force compaction to run garbage collection, and I need to read more about that. It's weird. So yeah, I just need to like give it a day of work to see where it's at. Okay. And so given, just given timing, I guess context setting for, for the team is that we have pretty much this, this week of work, um, next week of, of work is, is going to be um, team week related stuff. And so we're going to be pretty, pretty heads down and um, there's going to be time for, for hacking on stuff, but I wouldn't imagine a lot of people are having time to get their, their normal stream of stuff done. And then folks who are going to IPFS camp are going to be um, busy through the, through the end of uh, June and that that leads us into Q3. So when we're thinking about things like OKRs or, or other initiatives that we'd like to to land um, Where we have limited limited time on our hands. Um, let's make sure we're prioritizing it to to get things over the finish line if if that is possible um, and Just at the very least what we're gonna need to have in our minds of like where what is left on this thing? Um, is it something we're continuing on into Q3? to continue pushing on, or um, are we abandoning this or something like that? Great. Thanks for that, Molly. Uh, moving on to BitSwap, if everyone's OK. Good. Um, I know Hannah's out uh, <laughs> last week and this week on vacation. Um, she did uh, put up a PR, uh, use realistic test network with DHT, um, which needs review. So. Uh, if you're interested in that, can you check that um, check that out this week if you have time? I, there's no update aside from that. Um, so moving on to core API, uh, Lucas, I think you're working on this as well. Oh, yeah. So I spent half of at least half of last week debugging a PubSub issue, where if a PubSub sub was running on the daemon and you try to close the daemon, it would just hang for whatever reason. Uh, and yeah, it turns out debugging multiple contexts and like five curtains at one time is hard. So it took some time. But yeah, it's fixed now. And the constructor pull request is ready for review now. 
Nice. Uh, are you down to post that in the uh, in the crypt path? Uh, Just the link. To it the looks like you might be decent. Michael? Oh, am I out of date? Is that what you're saying? Not up to date. Either. Oh, okay, great. Sorry about that. Thank you, Dominic. Um, okay, uh, faster file adding. Looks like uh, Lucas, this is you as well, doing everything this week. Yeah, so that's on the topic of OKRs. So that is one of my OKRs for Q2, but there is very little hope of finishing in it within Q2. So that we probably carry over to Q3. Uh, but yeah, I started working on some benchmarks to have something to compare against. And I probably know what I will do to improve things. So it mainly will be just abandoning use of MFS in kerning other because it creates uh, like three times or four times overhead for some calls when adding their many, many files and directories. So yeah, that should help. Great. This initiative is going to carry over. So uh, is that that's true? It's so all included in the in next week's uh, list of initiatives as well. Cool. Um, so provider records. I'm working on that. Um, I'm working on the provider routes. I was a little um, not distracted, but I had I was multitasking last week. Um, Basically, the JSI PFS team has some stuff going on that I reviewed, looked at, and been having some conversations around. I went through, I introduced a provider tag and went through the issues list and tried to either review or close um, or and tag anything that's provider related, just so I can keep keep track of it. Um, and then I I spent uh, I was out sick on Friday, but on Thursday I started extracting the um, the provider module from the go IPFS repo. Um, there's one dependency on the pinning service that causes some problems for dependency injection um, where like I tried making an interface like I tried just like putting just the interface that I need from the pinning service in the go IPFS provider module but then it's not being provided in the DI container so I'm just working on that uh, today and then once that's done I want to get the the CI readme and the rest of the stuff in that repo to make it a little more um, a little more official and get that out to Hector for the cluster. Um, that's kind of my, those are my priorities today. I mean, for this week. Um, any questions for provider records? Great. Uh, what about the <coughs> base 30? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, shoot. Data on people using the provider records. Um, fix the, the, you know, turning off providing. Um, is that something that's already like accessible to people or is that gonna be? Uh, it is It is accessible. I haven't, um, I, had, I was coordinating with Aaron um, for, uh, from Infra for the, for um, rolling that out in to get to some of the gateways. I need to pick up that conversation again. I've just been, I've just been busy with some other stuff. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try to get on that. Yeah, I guess um, probably loop in M. Burns on that, Michael Burns, um, okay. as, as the closest gateway person. And I think you probably already know George, George McGraw, but the two of them are um, leading the gateway charge right now. That's George, like Carbon 5, George? Oh, great. Okay, yeah, I will, I will start that conversation with both, with both of them. Uh, thanks for that, Molly. Um, okay, moving on to the Base32 CID v1 work. Um, uh, Lytle can't join, um, but has a question about next steps and has a, a link to an issue. Um, if, and he's curious if it's realistic to ship new Go IPFS with this before camp, um, or are we moving this to July? So um, if someone qualified to answer that can take a look at that, please. Um, and uh, moving on to IP, IPFS over Fuse, Dominic? Yeah, sure. Um, not much to report this week. I have mostly been uh, spending time on camp-related stuff, kind of preparing in a way to speak with the team about that, and then the following week speak to, I guess, the community about that kind of stuff. 
Um, so yeah, a lot of, a lot of prep work, not a lot of presentation work yet, but that's it for me. Do you want to just give like a teeny, I know you're going to probably be telling us this next week as well, but just like very, very, um, high level picture on like where we're at, what's remaining. Um, and like kind of like the next steps on it. And then we can dive deeper into that next week, but we're going in at least with a little bit of, of context in the big, big picture. Totally. So something I have been doing recently has been like looking at other file systems and then like other things that are like file systems. One of those being IPLD. So something that they were talking about at their last meeting was kind of like the metadata um, around, I guess, like node metadata and stuff like that. And that's something that's kind of undefined in my space at the moment. So it seems undefined, kind of undefined or loosely defined there totally undefined in my domain. And I kind of have the same problem that they're having where we can kind of do basically whatever we need to do, but we don't really know what that is. So it's a matter of like asking developers kind of, what do you want to see out of this? Like how, do, how would you use this API? Um, that's, that's kind of the thing I'm trying to focus on next, I guess. And then like the state of where things is, is that we have an implementation up that can do a, a specific thing. So it, it mimics a Unix file system, and then we can create this other thing that doesn't necessarily have to be Unix-like. It can be Go-like, or if we coordinate with the JS team, it'll be similar to a JS native library, something like that. I don't know if that paints a clear picture, but that's where I'm at. Uh, Dominic, you're, the metadata you're talking about around nodes, that's around like, uh, like IPLD nodes, like blocks, right? Yeah, so in the file system, we have basically the same kind of abstraction of that. We don't care what it is, we just want to know that it's a node and have a certain common interface with that. So something I, I saw in Plan 9 was they have this concept of like every node has a version. And it's not really important for anything other than caching. So it's, it's this abstraction of like things like that, which are not very typical in Unix systems, where it's basically a bool of like, has this thing changed or not? Um, and you don't have to know anything about what that data is formatted like or anything outside of this like header or this metadata structure, which could be stored essentially anywhere. So Unix has two has place for metadata but is this metadata that needs to be in the file system or metadata that's just sort of like needs to be stored locally that is that is kind of the boundary that I'm trying to define there is like what Got it. is local and what is universal I suppose yeah we have some discussions around metadata for like providing and garbage collection and stuff uh, too um, I'd be curious if you could point me to I'll go looking myself, but if you if you know of anything that's written down that the IPLD folks are talking about, I'd love to I'd love to take a look at that. Too. I realize it may not be exactly the same metadata. But. Um, okay, gateway performance. Does anyone have an update for that? We definitely do. Um, I. I'm hoping that, I guess I can give a really high level overview and then maybe folks who are more tactically close to can jump in. Um, so I think as people notice, the gateways have been struggling um, for the past couple of weeks. Um, so we've rolled out 421 to a number of gateway nodes. Um, I don't quite know if it's 100% if it's yet and have been doing a lot of investigating. We, we spun back up the, um, the gateway tiger team and we named it the gateway fire squad because we're, we're more dealing with, with fires than tigers at the moment um, and have been kind of uh, jumping into address. So Roll has been doing a lot of instrumentation and um, adding more metrics to the DHT. I don't know whether those got, all got pushed out over the weekend, but if not, there are a couple of more that um, we can push out to, to prod on the gateways and get some feedback on where the slowdowns are happening. Um, there's already been some, some information collected through that. Um, and so I think Roll already has closer ideas of, of where the problems are. Um, Steven was pushing on like an actual, an actual fix <laughs> that he thought was a, a root cause of some of the issues that people have been seeing. Um, and then 
I think Cuba and or other Jeremy um, might have jumped in on helping instrument some of this stuff. The high level goal being if we add better instrumentation to the gateways and to the um, the libp2p network, then we're going to have a better sense of where the problems are happening, and it's going to be faster for us to debug issues and prevent issues in the future. Um, and so that's we have kind of a tactical track on this of like, let's just figure it out right now. And then we have a more forward looking track of what are the things that we want to be alerting on over time. Um, and the gateway team can, is helping set up some of that. And we have a meeting, I think right after this one, um, to, to talk about our, our status on that and how, how uh, those changes have landed. Does anyone else have a more tactical update than me? Uh, so the the only thing that will help the network with 4421 is if more people upgrade. Uh, that'll only help because that includes a few fixes for something we call address explosion, um, where basically some of the, like each two nodes will remember old addresses and won't forget them as you give them new addresses. Uh, so that now we try to dial those, you know, trying to dial 20 addresses or 40 or 100 addresses instead of just like one or two good addresses, which makes dialing take longer. Um, that's still not a complete fix, though. The real fix here will be not joining the DHT if you're a, an ephemeral node, but that's still a ways away. And they look like that watch part require entire network to upgrade before it'll be viable. So we just change the defaults to set people in DHT client mode? Um, uh, yes, so that's something we could do in IPFS. Uh, the question is like, do we want to change the config by default? Because the config currently, unfortunately, we build all these defaults into the config. Uh, so like, we have no way of telling if the user explicitly said I want to be the HTML node, or if that's just the default. So we could run a migration that literally kicks everyone off the DHT, and we say, hey, when you upgrade, we run this migration. If you want to rejoin the DHT, please do this. Um, I, I really don't want to do that, but I think that may be the best way of doing that at this point. Yeah, because like, otherwise, just like upgrading. Maybe it's not an issue. We should also talk to partners because we have a lot of partners that are controlling a lot of these nodes where they may be able to just switch on something. I want to make sure that TechFell and Opposer are not putting all the nodes, like all the mobile nodes as a DHC service. Um, but yeah. Sounds worth um, starting to, to kick off a conversation about that. I don't know whether that's this week or if that's something that we can talk about during some week, but um, especially since that's like we could have a conversation and then we feel like, you know, we're going to have them all there during IPFS camp. That might be a good opportunity to like, get a lot of acts and um, roll something out quickly because I'm just worried this thing is going to end up in like, it'd be a really good idea. It's really not hard to do, but we just haven't made a decision on it and therefore it takes months instead of like yep. someone implements it and ships it and then we're good. Yep, I agree. Great. Thank you both for that update. Uh, moving on to GraphSync, I, there's no update posted and um, Hannah is not here today, so um, if anyone is else has information on what's going on with graph scene, that would be appreciated. Anyone? Yeah. Um, sorry. This is ending up being a lot of me. I should have updated the notes. Um, uh, so we had a meeting on Monday with um, Alex North on the Falcoin team to just get a sense of kind of what our timeline as, as like graph sync tiger team is looking at, like and what our first first big users timeline is like and whether that's going to fit well. Um, we think we are lining things up, but we don't have much slack on our timeline right now. So um, Eric is Eric Meyer on the IPLD team is pushing really hard on getting selectors um, spec'd out and a design of this that's final enough for um, kind of solidifying the interface there, such that Hannah can do the, the remaining work to in, start integrating Go Graph Sync with the, the Go, Go IPLD Prime selectors. Um, and so that is probably going to be happening the first week of July or so. And we're trying to aim to be doing, starting the integration with Go Filecoin in mid-July. Um, so not a whole lot of wiggle room to get this stuff done. Hannah estimates it about, it's about a week-ish of work probably to do the integration with Go IPLD Prime, which is, I mean, she's already been thinking a lot about this and, and very on board with stuff, but also like, when interfaces change, there's always um, new things that come up and, and like some changes that need to be made. So um, that's kind of where everything is. We're, we want to have a conversation about this while lots of people are sync with each other in Barcelona. Um, and so we should keep that on our agenda and make sure we find time during an unconf slot or, or something to um, you know, be looking through Eric's selector stuff and making sure that we're super good to go on it. So right when July starts, we can hit the ground running. 
Great. Thanks again for that update. Uh, process improvements. Um, I see nothing listed here. Eric did ask me to do these meetings for a few weeks. I don't. I, I I'm suspicious of his uh, of his improving. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, I think we're still working on all of that. Um, moving on to garbage collection. Unless anyone has questions about or any other comments on process improvement stuff. I might have missed the beginning, but is Eric is Eric out of town or is he sick or should we be sending him flowers? Uh, he's uh, vacationing. So. He's good. <laughs> um, appreciate that though. Um, so garbage collection, I added this on here. I, I, until the provider stuff gets closer to wrapping up, there's probably not gonna be huge updates on this, but I'm gonna try to push the low hanging fruit forward uh, steadily as much as I can. Um, turns out that the JSI PFS team is also doing stuff around garbage collection. I kind of um, sort of randomly in talking about the provider stuff with someone learned that and so I've, I've been trying to read up on, on some of the stuff that they're doing and also having some discussions there. Um, I have started putting together the bigger garbage collection issue and I'm also gonna do the same thing where I go through and try to find everything that's related and try to bring it all together into one issue. I started that process, I just haven't, I just haven't got it all together yet. So, um, so I'm still working on, I'm still working on it. And that's it for the initiatives, unless someone has questions about anything that we just discussed. Comments, concerns. Um, cross team updates. I don't. I don't think we have any any um, anyone here to speak to any of these. Um, but testbed. Anyone have anything to say about testbed? No. Um, what the status is with the IPNS improvements that we're hoping to land. Both IPNS, um, kind of multi-writer IPNS for Go and um, the JS IPNS improvements that Hugo's been working on. I personally can't speak to that to that work. I know that Adina has been working on that kind of stuff. Though. Yeah, Adina is still working on the uh, pub sub stuff. He's been talking with Vizo on that. Um, I know there are some. There's still some back and forth on Thursday, but I have been out. Uh, the I don't know what's going on with the uh, JavaScript side. Uh, David, do you happen to know? Uh, I know uh, a little bit. So Ugo is owning um, the IPNS through DNS um, for um, like within the web browsers working group, and so his goal is to have that completed still this week or next week because the workshop on identity uh, will rely on it. Um, I don't believe there is a spec. I think this like work is very developed on, on the description that Lars wrote a while back. Um, and so I think right now it's very JS centric. Like I, I think it's like a, a way to do IPNS resolutions over the NS, but like only being implemented in JS. I don't think Adin is replicating that work in Go site. But like this is like, because as I said in the beginning, I know very little, maybe, maybe they are like, um, check with Adin for sure. Okay, just hoping there's some document I can look at because, like, if there's some, no, it, this could be a V1, but it, it doesn't sound like it should be that hard to go because like, we have a bunch of good DNS libraries we can just throw in, like, pull the data. Uh, the server side is probably more complicated than the client side. Uh, so, yeah, it'd be good to just have a hack and go before we have the access camp, but we'll see. Well, we can um, in the go. Yeah, exactly. Like once this pull request, the notes will group from this meeting, uh, in the pull request, I'll just like ping a bunch of people. I know that like today uh, there's a lot of people uh, out because it's a national holiday in a bunch of countries. Uh, and so we might get an update tomorrow. Small note, I just want to be mindful of people's time that it's 1030. Great, okay. Um, we have, I'm sure we have wins and celebrations. We just don't have them written down. Um, um, and we have no questions or notes. So I think that that is it, unless uh, uh, they want to follow. Win and celebrations. Uh, Jeremy said that around 50,000 notes apparently have updated to the latest version. I think that's what he said, right? Nice. Molly? That's the 421. I remember yeah. 40,000, but you know, that okay. was on Friday. So I think it was okay. with 24 hours of pushing out a blog post on it that we, we hit a ton of things.
which is awesome and shows us that uh, the, the blog post route pings a lot of people, maybe more people than Twitter followers. So cool. It also means that those aren't waste of time. <laughs> yeah, people are hungry for updates. I think it's also that on Thursday, Infura had a scheduled update to all of Infura hosted nodes, which is a lot. So I think Infura is totally responsible for <laughs> 40,000 upgrades. I wonder if I the think nodes, also, yeah, go ahead. We should also check with them to make sure that the nodes aren't firewalled. Yeah, okay. I think like the the updates also um like I think IPFS desktop, so like the IPFS the IPFS GUI team has put a lot of work in auto updating or enabling users to just click in one box and like get the node auto updated for IPFS desktop, which which apparently helps a lot. Um, and, and they have like right now like 50k uh, downloads or something. Like of course, like not all of them are always on all the time, but um, but it's a lot of nodes coming from there. Nice, cool. So um, through UX and be like, how many times should we really be updating people to update their node? Because right now I get a uh, a notification about like on average twice a day to update my desktop node, which is maybe a little more than, than I need. Wow, nice. Cool. I think that's, um, that's it. I think we're all going to see each other in person uh, next week, probably. The next meeting. I think I might be traveling. I might be <clears throat> arriving around the time of the, the meeting. But, um, but yeah, look forward to seeing everyone. Proactively canceling this meeting because I think a lot of people will be en route and we'll be together, but maybe instead we try and carve out um, if, if folks are around in the, the evening of the day to just have kind of an in-person like check-in or hello or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can I speak, speak with you right after the meeting about a, just a logistic procedural thing, Molly? Sure. Um, it'll, would... it'll probably take just one minute. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. I think that's a wrap. Everyone. I'll stop recording.